So in our lives, I want you to be at the place in your life that I don't care if God blessed me with the best job in the world. I'm going to keep seeking him because it's, it was God that got me this job. It's going to be God that's going to keep me. It's going to allow me to keep this job. Amen. So just as the devil, he's out seeking someone he may devour. Let us make sure we're seeking Jesus so that he won't come and catch you off guard. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Kingdom Rock Network. My name is Shekana, and I'm back with you again. So we started last time when we were together a series called Growing Pains, which was part one. So in that part, we kind of talked about it's, it's hard, it's hurting me, but it's helping me. However, today is part two, and the title of this one is going to be Position Properly. Now, throughout this series, the goal of this series is for us to understand that these are necessary pains that we are going through that we have to endure as we elevate with our walk with Christ. Amen. You can't get around it, but you can get through it with Jesus. All right. So let's go ahead and get into part two, because I'm excited. I hope that you are, too. All right. So in part two today, I want to briefly talk about being properly positioned for his pouring, his pouring, talking about Jesus being properly positioned for his pouring. Just like any game day for any sport, whether it's football or basketball, the goal of the coach is to make sure that his players are in the right spot so that they can make sure that the, bat, that the ball is getting passed to the proper person and that they can play the play correctly so they can win. Just like us in our lives, God's goal for us, he wants us to make sure we're in the right position, we're, pro we're in the right position, we're postured pro properly so when God begins to pour his anointing, when he gets ready to pour his oil, when he gets ready to pour his gifts, when he gets ready to pour his blessings, that we're able to receive it. Amen? All right, so let's go ahead and get right into it. So when it's time for God to release, if we, weren't, if we, were, not, if we were not in the right position, we will not receive. Just like any person, for an example, let's say that, you have a package getting ready to come. You have to sign for the package. If you're not at your home at the proper time in the right position and you're not there to sign the package, you're going to miss it. If you plant a seed in the soil and it wasn't a good ground, it wasn't the proper ground, when it's time for it to sprout, you won't see anything. And just like, like for those that like to make investments, if you make the wrong investment, you won't see money gained, but income lost. Amen? All right, so I have three points for you tonight. The first point I want to cover tonight is prepare, also known as ready. Prepare, also known as ready. Now, when God tells us something in our lives, whether it's a blessing coming or whether it's danger coming, we must not only listen to God, but hear what he has to say and take action. To take action, that means to prepare. So let's think about Noah for an example. Noah, he didn't just hear God speak to him. Oh, there's something coming, Noah. Noah, he heard God and he also took action because he knew something was coming. So a lot of times in our life, we hear the word ready. As we said, prepare means ready. We hear the word ready and we think that ready, it means go. But I hate to bring it to you. The word ready does not mean go. The word ready, it means to prepare. Um, in my life, I ran track. I ran track all throughout middle school and all throughout high school. So I know a little, a little bit about track. So throughout this lesson, I'm going to use the sport track as examples to give you um, a, better under, a, a better visual of what I'm talking about tonight. So just like track season, when it's time for us to get to our events, we get on that line and we never hear them say, runners, get ready, go. It's runners, get ready, get set, and then go. So a lot of times in our life, we think we hear the word ready, but ready does not mean go. Ready, it means to be prepared. All right? All right, so like I said, ready does not mean go. It, it means to be prepared. Ready, set, and then go. So we're going to start with ready. It's the first thing we're starting with tonight is ready. So the first scripture I want to cover tonight is going to be Hebrews 11. I'm coming from the NKJV, and it reads, By faith, Noah being divinely warned of these things, not yet seen, Move with godly fear, prepare an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became here of the righteousness, which is according to faith. Now, again, with this scripture, like I mentioned earlier, Noah didn't just hear about something God was telling him. He wasn't just like, well, got to hear what you're saying. I understand a storm is coming. I understand there's a flood coming. I understand something is coming. He didn't just hear it, but when he heard God, he took the proper steps to prepare. So when the thing came, he was ready. So just imagine if Noah didn't prepare properly. Noah would be just like everybody else. Him and his household would have not been saved, would have not been rescued. 
So in this season of our life, as we're preparing, I want you to understand that when you prepare something, preparing it protects you from what's to come. So when God speaks a word to you, whether it's a blessing coming, whether it's a storm coming, whether it's goodness coming, whether it's badness coming, I want you to understand that when God speaks to you, don't just sit there and listen, but get up and make the proper adjustments, make the proper preparation so that you'll be ready when the thing comes. Amen. All right. So just like Noah, Noah didn't just hear a word from God. No, he prepared for the flood. Just like the Israelites, they didn't just hear about the death angel coming. They heard about it and they also took preparations by putting the blood on their door so they will be saved. Amen? And just for even here in these times that we're living in now, when we hear about a snow blizzard, most people don't just sit and hear about the snowstorm. They go take action. And we know to take action because when you go to the stores, you'll see all the stuff on the shelf is gone. They're preparing for what's to come. Amen? So in our lives, God is saying we must prepare because when you prepare, it protects you. Now, another scripture I want to cover tonight is Ecclesiastes 7 and 8. In this scripture, I'm coming from the KJV, and it reads, Better is the end of a thing than is the beginning thereof. And the patient in spirit is better than the proud in spirit. Now, for a long time when I used to read this scripture, for some reason, I always thought that it was saying that your beginning is going to be bad, your beginning is going to be awful, your beginning is going to be a struggle, your beginning is going to be so rough. But if you read this scripture, it never says anything about your beginning being bad. All it says is your end is going to be better than your beginning. Better it means more than or enhance. So God is saying without the scripture, he revealed to me that I'm not saying your beginning is going to be bad. He's saying that your end is going to be better than your beginning, which meaning whenever you get ready to go do a thing, God is saying don't, don't make your beginning thinking it's going to be something bad. Don't go into your beginning thinking it's going to be defeated. Don't go into your beginning starting this business, starting whatever it is you're starting in your life. God said don't go into this thing defeated. Don't go with the mindset thinking that you already failed. Don't go into it with the mindset thinking that I already lost the race before I even began. So the beginning does not mean bad. The beginning is supposed to be just as good as the end, but the end will be better. Amen? And like I said, I'm going to use track throughout this season. Now, throughout this lesson, excuse me, we're going to use track throughout this lesson. Now with track, there's this race called the 4 by one relay. And the 4 by one relay, it requires four racers. You got one, two, three, four. Now, those are called legs. You got leg one, leg two, leg three, leg four. Now, within that race, they tell you to have your strongest legs in the beginning and also the end. You want to have a good start so that you can get a good head start, and you want to have a good end so that your end can be just as powerful and powerful you can finish strong. So just like that race, God is saying in our lives, give your beginning your best and your end will be explosive. Let me say it one more time. God is saying, give your beginning your best, and your end will be explosive. So I don't know who's watching here here today. I want you to understand whatever it is you're getting ready to do as you're preparing for what God has to bestow upon your life, do not make your beginning bad. God is saying, give your beginning your best. Put in your time, put in effort, invest, make wise choices, make wise decisions so that your end will be explosive. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. So all in all, at this point, point one, prepare, also meaning ready. Prepare when God speaks and make sure you prepare well. Don't halfway prepare, but prepare well. Amen? Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right, so let's just go ahead and get to the second point. The second point here is posture, also known as set. So first we had prepare, also known as ready. Now we're here with second point, posture, also known as set. Now the word posture, posture... It is is the positioning in which something is in alignment. Let me say it one more time. Posture is the positioning in which something is in alignment. If a person isn't postured correctly or in position correctly, it is difficult for them to receive. Let me give you a brief example. If I have a cup right here and I'm trying to pour this bottle of water in that cup, will I aim very well from back here? Probably not. But in order for me to get that pouring that I need, I must posture my hand, the cup, in the right alignment so that I can make sure that it will receive and will go inside of the cup. So just like that, God is saying, our lives in this time in your life, as you're getting ready and you're preparing, get things set, God is saying, make sure that you are in the right position so that when I pour this thing into your life, you'll be able to receive it. Amen? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, posture is important because posture places you in the proper position to have possession. Let me say it one more time. Posture is so important because posture, it places you in the proper position to have possession. Now, the first scripture I want to cover tonight with this point, I'm going to talk about the one with the issue of blood. 
I'm reading Mark 5, 25 through 34. It's a little lengthy, but it's okay. We can read our Bibles every now and then. And I'm reading from the NKJV. And it reads, Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately, the fountain of blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed from the, the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing. But the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed from all your afflictions. Excuse me, and be healed from your afflictions. Now, with this scripture, it's a lot that we can cover, but for time's sake, we're just going to focus on a few parts of this scripture. With this scripture, I want you to understand that, first of all, this lady, she went for, it says, 12 years of bleeding out of her body. And I don't want to be gross here, but for the women that understand the menstrual cycle, I want you to understand yourself bleeding for 12 years. After the fifth day, I'm ready to be over with. But imagine 12 years of bleeding. And in those times, she was seen as this disgusting woman. She was seen as this nasty woman, this, this filthy woman. I don't want to be around her. She's nasty. She's bleeding out of her body. And also not that, but this woman, she spent all that she had, meaning that she was broke. She gave all her money to every physician trying to find a cure for her body. She, she, what she wanted was healing, but somehow she wasn't positioning herself right to receive that healing. She gave all she had, spent all that she had to get healing, but it said that she only grew worse. So she gave all her money. She spent all these years being in her body, just having blood leaving out of her body. And just imagine, I'm sure she was very weak. She was very weak. Losing blood for 12 years, I'm sure she was very weak in her body. So with that being said, we understand one, the woman, she had a mission and her mission was to go get healing. However, her mission was not accomplished because she was not making herself positioned properly where she needed to be to receive the pouring. The woman of it, the woman with the issue of blood, she got her healing when? When she got at the feet of Jesus. When she was able to connect to Jesus. When she was able to connect to the source of life. When she was able to connect to the one who is the reliable source. All the other sources that she was using, they weren't reliable. They were just things that were sitting around. He was just a doctor. She was just a doctor. They were just here. But who has the final say so? That's Jesus. So she got her healing once she was able to position herself at the right posture and touch the hem of God's garment. Something connected to Jesus. And that's when she began to get her healing. So just like this scripture, God is trying to show us that it's so essential that when God is, whenever we're seeking for something and we're longing for something, that we must be in the right position so that when God gives to us, we can receive it. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So like I said, many times in our life, God is saying, this is what we're doing. He's saying, your motives was good, but your movement was bad. Let me say it one more time. God is saying, your motive is good, my friend, my brother, my sister. Your motive is good, but your movement is bad. Now, let me give you a few examples for those who may not understand what I'm saying. You can have the right intentions for this man and for this woman. You loving her. He's loving you. You're doing all you're supposed to be doing. You're, you're giving yourself to him. He's giving himself to you and you're loving each other. You have the right intentions, but God is saying that man, that woman wasn't intended for you. And that's why you're not getting what you want. That's why you're never happy. That's why you never sustain because that woman, that man is not intended for you. Let me give you another example. You're working and making money, but you don't manage it well. Your motives are good. You're trying to get out of bed every day and go to work and, and do what you're supposed to do to get your money. Your motives are good, but God is saying your movement is bad. You're not managing your money well, so when you receive the money, your money's already gone because you owe him and her and her and him and every loan company. You're not managing your, your money well. So your motive is good getting out of bed to go to work, but you're still living from check to check because you're not managing your money well. Your movement is bad. Another example, you took a position for more pay. Yes, it says that I'll get this amount of money. I'll be able to do this right here, do more over here. I can do more over here, more over there. So 
Your motive is good to take the position because you want more pay, but now your peace is gone. You have no peace. And I don't know about y'all, but the word of God tells me that when he bestows blessings upon us, it does not come with any kind of sorrow. So God is saying your motive was good, but your movement was bad. Another scripture I want to cover tonight with this, with this point, posture, is John 15, 5 through 6. I'm coming from the NKJV. And it reads, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him bears much fruit. From without me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is cast out as a branch and it withered. And they gather them and throw them into the, into the fire, and they are burned. Now, the scripture is showing us exactly who we ought to be connected to to receive what we need. You know who we're talking about? We're talking about Jesus. Jesus is the source. So I want you to take this with you um, as you go on with your lives. We need to connect to our creator. We need to connect to our creator. Who's our creator? Our creator is Jesus. I don't care what book you read. I don't care what you saw on the internet. I don't care who told you what. I'm telling you today from the word of God that Jesus is your creator. Amen. So in order for you to receive what your creator has for you, all the blessings, all the promises in his Bible, you must connect to him so that you're able to receive. You must be in the right position, the right posture to receive what he has for you so that he can pour into your life and then you're able to receive it. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So let's connect to our creators, what the scripture is trying to tell us. Connect to your creator. Amen? All right. And so another scripture with this point that I also want to cover tonight is, well, is John 14 and 6. I'm reading from the NKJV. And it reads, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, the scripture is telling us that God is saying, I am the way. God is saying, I am the truth. God is saying, I am the life. This is God speaking. I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So in order for us to receive that we're what we're supposed to be receiving from Jesus, we must get in the right position to receive what he has for us because God says he is the way. And I want you to think about this scripture, that sometimes when you, when you take a test, you'll see that you have answer A, it could be B, it could be C, it could be D. Those are all options. Those are all avenues. But God is saying, but I am the way. God is saying he is the answer. So you can go to every physician like the one my issue did, every doctor you can go to. You can go to wherever you want to go to. But God is saying, I am the way. So let's remember in our lives to go to Jesus because he is the way. He is the truth. And he is the life. Let's connect to the creator. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now that's part two. So that's, excuse me. That is point two. So we cover prepare, which means ready. We cover posture which means set. So what's next? What you think is go? You're wrong. The third point is pace. So God is saying, not go, but slow. Not go, but slow. So point three tonight, I'm going to cover is pace. Not go, but slow. Pace. So in this season of your life, for those that are watching right now, God is saying this very season that you're in, this very race you're taking, God is saying, I want you to pace this race. You're preparing properly. You're getting the right positioning. Things are getting ready to happen for you. But God is saying, I want you to rush. God is saying, I want you to pace. All right? Pace this race. Now, pace is a consistent and a continuous speed. To pace is a consistent and continuous speed. Now, let me just go ahead and move on to the next part. A lot of times in our life, most people... Once you find what you're looking for, what do you do? Most of the time you stop. Let's say I lost my keys. I looked in the bathroom. I looked in my purse. I looked in my book bag. I looked everywhere I could look. And I, and I get frustrated. But once I find my key, guess what? I stopped looking because I found it. So like most people do, once you seek and you find what you need, you stop looking. However, with God, you cannot stop looking or seeking him even after we, even after we receive. I'm going to tell you why. God is saying in our lives that I can't show you too much at a time because you'll stop seeking me. I cannot show you too much at a time because you'll stop seeking me. And some of you are probably in denial like, no, God, I, I, I'm, I'm still seeking you. I'm still doing what I'm supposed to be doing. I'm still praying like I'm supposed to. But God is saying, yeah, you're still praying, but not as hard as you were when your house was in foreclosure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You were fasting all right. You were praying and fasting. I mean, up early, late at night, warfaring and praying. Well, the doctor said you had cancer. Oh, yeah, you were warfaring, all right. You were praying real hard, giving it your all. You're being consistent in prayer. Yes, you're praying sun up to sundown when you were sitting in the jail cell and you couldn't reach anybody. 
Oh, yeah, you were praying all right when your job laid you off. You were praying and warfare and really easy, and it was not a difficult task for you to do whenever storms and things happen into your life. But God is saying, in this, in this point, I want you to pace this race. All right. So God said, I can't show you too much at one time. I can't give too, give too much to you at one time because you'll stop seeking me. It's easy for us to seek God when we're going through. And I will admit that it is so easy for us to go and pray. It's so easy for us to fast. You don't even think about food. You don't even have an appetite to even eat. You're too sick to eat because of what's getting ready to happen in your life. So God is saying, it's easy for you to do those things. But God is saying, I want you to even seek. I want you to seek me even after I bless you because there's more blessings to come. All right. So why? Some of you are probably asking, so what's the point of me to keep seeking after I find? Well, I got an answer for you, my friend. It was God that got you there, so it must be God to keep you there. It was God that got you there, so it must be God to keep you there. So let me help you out here a little bit. We must continue to seek God once he blesses us, because first of all, I don't know about y'all, but the blessing that God gave you, you know, you really didn't even deserve that. That position that you got, and you didn't have the credentials or the college credit or the education. God bless you with a position that you should be on the floor, but he got you in a, at, a, at an office. God bless you for the, with that job. So the same God that bless you with that job, somebody has to give you the credentials and the understanding of the job. Because remember, you don't have the college credits for it. You didn't go to school for it. You don't have the education or the skills for it. But God bless you with it anyway. So if God blessed me with it, that means I must go to Jesus and stay seeking Jesus for the answers so I can remain in this position, right? So it's not going to be man. It's not going to be woman. It's not going to be people out here to give me the credentials. I got to go to Jesus because I must seek his face and go to him because he blessed me with it. So it's going to be him that's going to keep me with it. All right? It was God that opened that door for you. You know that your, your credit score was a hot mess. It was, I mean, it was, it was bad. It was below bad. But God blessed you anyway to get that home. He blessed you to even get that car, that 2023. It's not even here yet. 2023. He blessed you to get that car, and you know you didn't deserve that car because your credit score tells you otherwise. But God blessed you with that thing. So just as God blessed you with it, knowing your credit score and your, your checking account doesn't match, it's going to be God to allow you to keep it. That's why it's so important that even after God blesses us, we must consistently seek him because it's him. It's he's the one that gave it to us. So we must stay in contact with him so he can uh, teach us and show us how to keep it. Amen. Thank you, Holy Spirit. All right. So with this point, another scripture I want to cover tonight is going to be 1 Corinthians 2 and 9. Read from the NKJV. And it reads, but it is written, eyes have not seen, nor ears heard, nor have entered into the heart of man the thing which God has prepared for those who love him. Once again, we didn't even see the blessing coming. It tells us that we, we, we didn't see it. We, we didn't know it was coming. So just as, God has, just as God is blessing us with things that we didn't even see, like, you know, you didn't deserve that. I know it didn't, that didn't belong to me, but God gave it to me anyway. I didn't even see it coming. Just like you don't see it coming, we got to know that we must seek God so that we can understand when he gives it to us that I didn't see it come, but God, teach me how to maintain this. Teach me how to hold on to this thing. Teach me how to keep this thing. Teach me how to, to keep this thing, Lord. It's going to be God to keep you with it. Amen. Another scripture I want to cover very briefly is going to be 1 Peter 5 and 8. Come from the New King James Version. And it reads, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Now, the devil is seeking whomever he, he, he may devour. It does not say he seeks and stop. It says that he is seeking, I-N-G, which means continuously, whom he may devour. So just as God blesses us with things in our lives, the devil does not get happy about a blessing that, he, that God gives you. The devil does not get happy about you getting your new nails done and your new hair done. The enemy is not happy about you getting that new car. The devil is not excited for you for getting that new job that you didn't even deserve, but God blessed you with it anyway. The devil is not happy. Just because God blesses you, I want you to understand that does not mean that, that the enemy is going to stop coming after you. Actually, my friend, it's actually more, more of a target on your back because you see God blessing you. He wants to kind of get you slowed down and get you off, off track and astray. All right? So just as... It's important for us to seek God continuously. It's important for us to do that because just as we're seeking God, just know 
that the devil is seeking someone who may devour. So if the devil is seeking somebody who may devour, I must continuously seek God so that when the enemy comes, I'll be a step ahead of him. I'll be, I'll be, a, I'll, I'll be ahead of the devil. I'll be ahead of the enemy. So when trials come, it won't catch me off guard. I believe it was Peter or Paul. They said, don't, don't, don't think it's a strange thing. Don't think it's something to be freaked out about or scared about because fire darts are going to come because it's not me, but it's the God that I'm chasing because I'm chasing Jesus because I'm after Jesus. I'm running after my savior, my king, the Lord of Lord, the king of kings. The enemy is comes trying to find somebody who may devour. But if I seek Jesus, I know for a fact that when the enemy tries to seek me, he can't get me easy. He can't. He can't touch me because my mind is too focused on Jesus. All right. So in our lives, I want you to be at the place in your life that I don't care if God blesses me with the best job in the world. I'm going to keep seeking him because it was God that got me this job. It's going to be God that's going to keep me. It's going to allow me to keep this job. Amen. So just as the devil, he's out seeking someone he may devour. Let us make sure we're seeking Jesus so that he won't come and catch you off guard. All right. And one more scripture I want to cover tonight. It's going to actually put us at a close. It's going to be Psalms 42 and one. And it reads, as the deer longs for streams of water, so I long for you, O God. Now, this scripture is very clear and it's telling us just like the deer, he's thirsty. Just as the deer, he's longing for something to drink. Just as the deer, he, he, he's, he's, he's panting for something to drink. Just as that same deer has that same energy towards that water that he wants to, he wants to just get a sip of it. God is saying, allow us to long for God in the exact same way. Let us long for Jesus. Let us thirst for Jesus. Let us want more of Jesus. Let us just let us have a desire for more of Jesus. All right. So all in all, in my closing, keep seeking Jesus. Pray always without ceasing and don't stop. All right, so that's all that I have for you tonight for part two of the series Growing in God. And we'll catch you next time here on the Kingdom Rock Network.